Formula One is set to introduce a new era of regulations in two years with a redesigned turbo hybrid power unit that emphasizes higher battery output alongside substantial changes to aerodynamics. These sweeping alterations mean that teams are already cautious about committing to major car upgrades for next season. Shifting too many resources toward 2025 cars could compromise their readiness for the 2026 Formula One championship. Yet, Ferrari team principal Frederick Vasseur suspects that some teams might go beyond a conservative approach and could even deliberately downplay their 2025 efforts in order to maximize wind tunnel time for the 2026 F1 campaign. The aerodynamic testing regulations use a sliding scale where teams finishing lower in the constructor's standings are granted more testing time. This could provide a strategic advantage if a team decides to forego competitiveness in 2025 in exchange for additional development time for the 2026 season. Discussing the potential impact of these rules on team strategies, Ferrari team boss Frederick Vasseur suggested that the aerodynamic testing allowance could dramatically reshape team priorities and influence overall speed performance in ways that differ entirely from current norms. Frederick Vasseur suggested that having an edge in wind tunnel testing is not particularly crucial at this stage, as current testing sessions yield only incremental improvements. However, the French manager sees the 2026 Formula One season as a potential turning point. According to Frédéric Vasseur, some teams that may not be aiming for a championship run next year could in fact opt to deprioritize their 2025 performance in favor of concentrating entirely on development for 2026. These teams might decide not to worry about their exact position in the constructor standings next year, whether they rank slightly higher or lower, and instead direct their resources entirely toward the 2026 Formula One car. Frederick Vasseur added that this approach could lead to a scenario where teams lower in the standings would be able to dedicate all their efforts to the new regulations, while teams competing for top positions might have to split their focus between 2025 and 2026. In this situation, top-ranked teams such as Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull, and Mercedes, preoccupied with maintaining their performance, might face the added challenge of competing against rivals who benefit from additional testing time and a singular focus on the 2026 Formula One season. Formula One's aerodynamic testing restriction system regulates each team's wind tunnel and computational fluid dynamics resources assigning limits per aerodynamic testing period of two months, which are scaled based on each team's position in the championship standings. This sliding scale is designed to even the playing field by giving lower-ranked teams more testing capacity. Under this framework, the championship leader is allowed 70% of a baseline testing allocation at the start of each period. For every position lower in the standings, this allocation rises in 5% increments, culminating in a maximum 115% allowance for the team in 10th place. This scaling encourages more competitive grids by enabling teams further down the order to accelerate development efforts. The system resets twice per year, on January 1st and July 1st, recalibrating each team's allowance according to the latest constructor's championship standings. This timing splits the ATR into two distinct periods, one running from January through June, and the other from July to December. Currently, the aerodynamic testing period allowances were updated following this season's Austrian Grand Prix with the new levels outlined in the championship standings table. This mid-year reset is especially strategic as teams could aim to fall lower in the standings by mid-season to maximize wind tunnel usage in the second half of the year, a move that could provide substantial preparation time for the 2026 regulations. This could certainly make the new regulatory cycle more balanced than expected, but we'll have to wait until the 2026 Formula One campaign to see which strategy proves to be the most effective. In 2024, wind tunnels are therefore back in the spotlight. Aston Martin is already working on its new in-house tunnel, while Red Bull aims to make theirs operational by 2026. Contrary to what one might think, building a new wind tunnel does not automatically lead to improved on-track performance. Former aerodynamicist Jean-Claude Mijot, who has worked in Formula One and in wind tunnel development, explains that the process is much more complicated than it seems. He stated that there are no immediate benefits, explaining that after construction, the tunnel must be fine-tuned and calibrated, a process that can take months and is essential to ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the collected data. 
One frequently mentioned aspect is correlation, or the ability to compare data from the tunnel with that obtained on the track. For example, if a new component tested in the tunnel promises significant gains in downforce, it may not behave the same way once mounted on the car. This year, some teams, including Ferrari and Aston Martin, saw their updates worsen car performance instead of improving it, confirming the difficulty of achieving perfect correlation. Jean-Claude Mijot emphasizes that, although it is impossible to replicate exact track conditions in the tunnel, the important thing is that the difference between lab data and real data remains constant over time. He explains that there will never be a perfect match, but if the improvements achieved in the tunnel correspond to an improvement on track, a significant amount of time is saved. The wind tunnel optimization process is long and full of obstacles, complicated by variables that are hard to replicate in the lab, such as temperature and tire condition. Over time, data makes the system more accurate, but it doesn't take much to disrupt it. Any change in conditions, such as a tire update or a regulatory change, forces technicians to reprocess the data already in hand. In short, building a new wind tunnel is not enough to achieve immediate results. It is a complex process that requires time, patience, and careful work on calibration and correlation. Thus, it is only over time that teams will be able to gain the much-anticipated advantages.